Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we're going to look at the On My Turn API script for Roll20. This script is helpful because it can remind new players about what they can do on their turns, and it can help more experienced players not to forget to perform a particular action each round. Note that because we're using the API, a pro account will be required in order to do this. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. So think back to when you were first learning how to play D&D, and you got into your very first combat, and you looked at your character sheet and you were like, what can I actually do? And so your friends and your DM, they gave you some pointers, they showed you you could do attacks, you could move, you could take bonus actions if you had them, and then after a while those things became routine. But sometimes when you've got a new player, they're not always comfortable speaking up that they don't know what they can do. And so this on my turn script that we're going to look at today will allow you to pop up a reminder into the chat so that they can see a quick refresher of what they have available. But this goes beyond that too. It's not just reminders. You can actually put macros in there so that operations occur on your turn. Maybe you're playing the Beast Heart from MCDM and you want to remember to generate ferocity for your pet every round. You can actually pop up a prompt that says, hey, it's time for you to generate ferocity. Enter in the number of adjacent enemies and then generate ferocity from there. So let's see how we set this up. So the first thing we need to do is get the code. And the code lives in this forum post, which is linked down in the description below. And the code was written by the arcane scriptomancer himself, the Aaron. So thank you, Aaron, for everything you do for the community. And what we want to do is grab this script right here. I'm just going to copy everything from the word on all the way down through these closing marks here with the semicolon. We're going to make sure we copy all this. And then we're going to go into our game's settings. And we're going to click New Script. And we're going to paste in the code that we just copied. And we're going to call that On My Turn. And then we'll save our script. All right. And that will restart the sandbox. And our script is now ready to go. So now that we have the script installed, we want to think about what do we want to actually have happen on a particular character's turn. And so what I'm showing here is a very rudimentary reminder message of what you can do on your turn. And let me just run this real quick so you can see what it is. I'll just paste it right into the chat here. And you can see it's just saying a purple box on your turn. You can move up to your speed. You can attack and a quick description of how you actually make the attack and a bonus action of hide to make a stealth check. Obviously, you can make this say or do whatever you want, but I just want to give you a flavor for what's going to actually display on a particular character's turn. So now what we need to do is find the character sheet for the character that we want to have that display on. And so I'm going to open up Sortra's character sheet here. And I'm going to go to the Attributes and Abilities section. And what we want to do is in the Abilities section, I'm going to click Add. And that's going to give me a new ability down here. I'm going to name this ability On My Turn. And the O in On, the M in My, and the T in Turn should be capitalized. And then what we can do is paste in that code that we had. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Let's minimize Sortra's character sheet. And now let's get into a fight. So we're going to have Sortra get in a combat with these three goblins here. So let's open up the turn order window. Let's roll initiative for each of the goblins. And now I'm going to roll initiative for Sortra. All right, and let's go ahead. Let's sort our turn order by descending. And now we're just going to move through. So, you know, Goblin 1 is going to do its thing. Goblin 2 does its thing. Goblin 3 does its thing. Now it's about to be Sortra's turn. And on Sortra's turn, boom, we got our pop-up saying that on our turn we can do these particular operations. So now Sortra has the reminder of what they can do during the turn, and then they can perform one of those actions and move on. But as you'll notice, this is popping up in the regular chat, and that means every player is going to see it. If we want, we can make this whispered to Sortra so that it doesn't show up for anyone but her. Let's see how to do that. So what we're going to do is open up Sortra's character sheet again, go back to attributes and abilities, back to the on my turn action, and we're just going to put in slash W space, the at sign, an open curly brace, and character underscore name. 
and then a closing curly brace. And that will whisper this to Sortra. So let's go ahead, let's save this. And then I'm just going to leave her character sheet open. Let's continue on with combat. So Sortra's turn is done. The goblins go one, two, three, back over to Sortra. And now you see it's been whispered from Sortra. Now you may have noticed that the macro fired twice. And I found that if you make changes to the on my turn ability while you're in a combat, sometimes this happens. But in just regular combat where you aren't making any modifications, this doesn't take place. So if this starts to happen where things are firing twice while you're debugging, close out of the combat round, clear all your turn orders, restart, and then it'll only fire once from there. But in a normal gameplay situation, it will only fire one time. Now, this isn't limited to just reminder text. You can have on my turn run operations for you as well. So, for example, this Beast Heart class, which is produced by MCDM Productions, I'll, I'll put a link to this down in the description below, they have an animal companion who every round builds up ferocity, and that ferocity fuels powers that the companion can perform. And so the way that works is, as long as the companion isn't incapacitated, each round their ferocity increases by 1d4 plus the number of hostiles within five feet of it. So we can actually put in a prompt for you to enter how many hostiles are adjacent to the animal companion, and then it will roll that d4 and build the ferocity accordingly. Let's take a look at that. So back to the battle mat, here's my beast heart, here's her owl bear companion, and we want to generate ferocity for this animal companion. And the way we're going to do that is with this code right here. So we're going to have, again, that purple box template, and what we're going to say is prompt the user for the number of enemies adjacent to the animal companion, and then add a d4 to that. So when we actually run that code, and we'll just paste that in there. Here we go. We can see we get the box asking for the number of adjacent enemies, in this case, three. So let's go ahead, we'll click Submit. And there we go, we see our ferocity generated is three plus 1d4. We rolled a one, so we have four ferocity generated. So now what we're gonna do is take that code, I'm just gonna copy the whole thing again, and I'm gonna go back to my Beast Hearts character sheet. I'm gonna go to the Abilities tab here, and I'm going to put in a new ability and I'm going to call it generate ferocity and then paste that in and save that. Okay, cool. Now we're going to create the on my turn ability. And this is where things get interesting because we can't just call the generate ferocity ability directly in on my turn. And the reason for that is the generate ferocity macro as we have it right now is prompting the user to enter in information. It's doing that, enter the number of adjacent enemies. When the API calls macros like that, it doesn't know who to present the dialog box to. And so if the API tries to run this query directly, it's gonna error out because it's effectively like sending it to itself and it's not going to work correctly. So the way we're gonna get around that is with some code like this. What this is saying is we're gonna whisper to our character, so basically whispering to ourselves, and in this case our Beast Heart's name is Charlia, so we're gonna to whisper to Charlia, and then we're gonna put a button in the chat. And when we click that button, it's going to look at Charlia's character sheet and it's going to call the generate ferocity ability from her character sheet. And because we know who we're calling from and who we're presenting it to, the system will then correctly pop up the box to let us enter in how many adjacent enemies there are. So we're just going to copy this line right now. I've pasted it into the on my turn window here. And now let's roll initiative. So here we go, initiative has been rolled. We get this goblin up first. It's going to take its turn. We'll advance to Charlia. And now you can see from Charlia generate ferocity, the button has appeared. So we now get reminded in the chat that we're supposed to do this. We'll click generate ferocity. There are three adjacent enemies to our owl bear companion. So we'll submit. And there we go. We see that we have again generated four ferocity rolling three plus one d4 so there you have it that's how you can use the on my turn api to automatically perform an action every round again big thanks to the Aaron for making this script it's really helpful and we really appreciate everything you do for the community
And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, have a great day.